Hi, I'm Emmerich, and it's my pleasure to be here today to present our most recent work on Steel, a proof-oriented language embedded within F-Star based on concurrent separation logic. Over the past decade, rich, highly expressive concurrent separation logics such as FCSL or IRIS proved their usefulness to reason about complex concurrent programs. And today, we will rely on Steel Core, a concurrent separation logic that we presented at last year's ICFP. Steel Core has many features that you expect from state-of-the-art concurrent separation logics. It is an impredicative logic which provides all the standard separation logic connectives such as star, magic wand, conjunction, or quantification. Its memory model is based on partial commutative monoids and it also supports reasoning in a style akin to implicit dynamic frames, while also enabling the use of dynamically allocated invariants in concurrent programs. But one additional interesting point is that Steel Core is a foundational CSL shallowly embedded in F star, and therefore it directly applies to dependently typed F star programs and enables the use of powerful F star features such as refinement types or metaprogramming, while also providing for free F star SMT based automation to reason about programs. So, all this sounds great in theory, but unfortunately, in practice, actually using Steel Core for verification is challenging. And to present some of the issues we encountered, I'll use this simple swap program as a running example for this talk. This program is fairly textbook. It relies on the standard points to separation logic assertion to specify that, initially, we have two disjoint references R1 and R2 pointing to two values V1 and V2. And after execution, the post condition here specifies that we have two valid disjoint references, but the contents have been swapped see that R1 now points to V2. So what are some of the problems we encounter when trying to write and verify this program? Well, first, doing this directly in Steel Core requires explicit applications of the separation logic framework here at each function call. Second, it also requires explicit separation logic reasoning, for instance here applying associative commutative writings to a separation logic context through calls to the lemma commute star. And lastly, Despite Steel Core having support for implicit dynamic frames reasoning, they interact very badly with F star's SMT based automation, and we didn't manage to use them even on this simple swap program. And we'll come back to the reasons behind this a bit later, but for this swap example, this forces us to use the additional ghost variables v1 and v2 here passed as arguments. So instead of all this, we would much rather be able to write the program on the right, where all these issues have been solved. And so in today's talk, I will present the different steps that bring us from Steel Core to the Steel language and enable us to write this much nicer swap program. So to solve these issues, our contributions are the following. First, we propose a type and effect directed frame rule, which makes applications of framing algorithmic. We then automate frame inference itself by encoding the problem as an associative commutative unification problem modulo theories. And we provide a partial decision procedure for it that relies on a cooperation between F-star tactics and SMT solving. To improve the usability of implicit dynamic frames, thus removing the need for ghost variables in swap, we show how to automatically separate verification conditions between separation logic and what we call selector predicates, which are easily uncodable to SMT. And finally, building upon all this, we demonstrate the usability of Steel through many verified dependent type libraries, ranging from AVL3's relying on Viper style permission accounting for verification to dependently typed message passing concurrency, which relies heavily on PCM reasoning. So, our first step to make Steel Core usable is to make separation logic reasoning more palatable. And one natural idea, especially when working in F star, would be to automate separation logic reasoning by encoding it into existing SMT solvers. But unfortunately, despite their support for many logical theories, SMT solvers are not well equipped to handle separation logic. And there are several reasons to that. The first one being that separation logic is inherently higher order. Separation logic predicates are heap predicates, which are combined using different operators such as the separation logic star. Second, many separation logic predicates are recursive. And this is the case, for instance, of predicates modeling data structures like lists or trees that need to be packed and unpacked during verification. And lastly, and perhaps more importantly, the separation logic star is associative and commutative, and as such, 
reasoning heavily relies on AC associative commutative writings, for instance, to prove that P star Q star R is equivalent to R star P star Q, which is something that SMT solvers struggle with. So, all of this seems to suggest that SMT solvers should not be used inside separation logic based frameworks. But SMT solvers are invaluable for concrete program verification to reason about arithmetic or F star refinements, for instance. So the question becomes, how can we combine the two when working in a rich, higher order concurrent separation logic? And so our solution proposes to structure verification conditions to enable a cooperation between SMT and tactics, using each of them to the best of their ability. So one of the first problems we encountered is related to the frame rule at the core of separation logic reasoning. This rule states that given a separation logic hot ripple here on the premise, we can always add a frame P as long as it is separated or start from the specification in the hot ripple. But unfortunately, applications of this rule are non-deterministic. It can be applied to any command C, creating each time a new frame P that needs to be inferred as symbolized by the question mark. When doing interactive verification, that's fine, as a programmer can apply this rule when needed and instantiate the frame manually. But for semi-automated verification, that's more problematic, so we need to make this rule deterministic. And the way we do it is by making it syntax-directed, applying it exclusively at function calls. And you can see that, compared to the version above, here the conclusion of the rule does not contain a generic command anymore. It limits its application to function calls only. Unfortunately, directly encoding this syntax-directed rule into F star is not possible. And the reason is that we are working with a shallow embedding of a CSL, which means that we reuse the F star syntax and typing rules and cannot define function calls, for instance. So instead of making this rule syntax-directed, we leverage F star's effect system to make it type and effect-directed. And the way we do that is we define two different modalities which correspond to computations already framed and to computations not yet framed respectively. And you can see here that the typing judgment in the conclusion of our frame rule corresponds to a framed computation, since we just added a frame. And in the paper, we present a full calculus for separation logic using these modalities, and we also prove that the logic with this new frame rule was as expressive as the standard logic with non-deterministic framing. And so, to actually encode this calculus into F star, we relied on a recent F star feature called indexed effects, which extends F star's effect system and allowed us to encode the different modalities as different effects. So now that we automated applications of a frame rule, one problem remains. We must automatically infer the frames created, that is, the terms that were prefixed by a question mark. And let me explain how this works in steel on this simple example, which performs two successive writes on the reference R1. So first, the frame rule is automatically applied to both function calls, generating the frame f1 for the first call and f2 for the second call. So now we need to solve f1 and f2. And our observation is that separation logic verification conditions can be seen as associative commutative unification problems. For instance, solving the VC pointer r1 star pointer r2 is equivalent to f1 star pointer r1. That corresponds to finding a unification solution for f1 while allowing AC rewritings on the star. And the second observation is that we can always solve the equivalences in an order such that each problem contains at most one frame meta variable. And one way to do so is by simulating a forward symbolic execution. So starting from the top of the program, we solve F1 in the first problem encountered, then F2 in the second, F1 having been solved just before, and we finally reach a problem where no frame meta variable remains. And importantly, thanks to our restrictions on the application of the frame rule, the observations made on this simple example actually hold for all steel programs, and we can apply this methodology generically. So, based on what we just observed, we therefore reduced the problem of frame inference to solving equivalencies of a shape f star p1 star p2 is equivalent to q1 star q2. And to solve this well-defined and well-structured problem, we define a AC unification decision procedure which we implement as an f-star tactic, ensuring its correctness with respect to f-star's type theory. And importantly, this decision procedure can cooperate with the SMT solver by querying the solver to determine equalities on subterms 
leading to AC unification modulo theories. So for instance, here in this simple example, the AC unifier can pass the equality V1 equals V2 to the solver and conclude that the two terms are equivalent if the solver determines that the equality holds. And lastly, our decision procedure is partial, but in exchange, it does not require any backtracking. And since we are inside an interactive proof assistant, the user can always help frame inference by providing annotations. So as such, our tactic sacrifices completeness for speed and user interaction, enabling practical automation for separation logic reasoning. So we provide the full details of the decision procedure in our paper, including a proof of termination of the decision procedure and a proof that the scheduling we presented in the previous slide always exists for steel programs. So through its different steps, our hybrid tactic and SMT-based program verifier eliminates all mundane proof steps related to framing, yielding the program here on the right for swap. And you can see, for instance, that manual calls to the frame combinator or to AC rating lemmas disappeared. But the last annoyance is the presence of these ghost variables v1 and v2. And I will quickly show next how we can remove them in steel, providing a style akin to implicit dynamic frames. So, the main challenge with combining separation logic with heap predicates in the style of implicit dynamic frames is that, to be sound, heap predicates must be self-framing. That is, they can only depend on the part of a heap corresponding to the separation logic context. And this self-framing requirement is quite complex to reason about. It is higher order and interacts very badly with SMT. So to solve this issue, we instead propose a new notion of selector which corresponds to a self-framing representation of a separation logic predicate. So for instance, the selector of a reference could be the value it contains in memory. And building upon this, we propose a new formalism based on quintuples, where P and Q are separation logic assertions, and R and S are selector predicates. For instance, R is a proposition that can only access the, the selector of P. And selector predicates are therefore self-framing by construction, and we can abstract away the complex self-framing requirement from the user and the solver. So first order logic selector predicates, for instance, relating reference values in swap, can then be easily encoded to SMT. And in the paper, we provide the full calculus using printables and prove it sound with relation to steel core. So through all these steps, we obtain the swap program here on the right, where framing and frame inference have been automated and where we can specify the functional correctness of swap using selector predicates. And so this works with a wide range of programming idioms and in the paper, we show that it heavily reduces the proof overhead and also present many examples ranging from AVL trees to standard concurrent data structures, as well as a PCM-based encoding of two-party dependently tagged sessions. So in conclusion, we presented today's TL a full-fledged proof-oriented language for concurrent programming, which is shallowly embedded in the dependent tagged F-star and is based on a foundational CSL called SteelCore, which is entirely mechanized in F-star. Despite it, 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 its expressiveness, Steel provides useful automation facilities by relying on a mixture of tactic and SMT solving, while supporting many styles of specification and proof for concurrent programs, ranging from a Viper-style permission accounting with implicit dynamic frames to Iris-style dynamically allocated invariants while also including partial community monoid-based reasoning and dependent types. And we are very excited to push the verification framework to its limits, to reason in future about complex, low-level, high-assurance concurrent programs. Thank you for your attention.